Thank you. Um, I think we've, we're already seeing that this is a science in itself, uh, if you want. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, su yeah. I suspect that many of you here, many of the participants, have um, many questions now. Shall we open this up now that you have the opportunity to ask um, some of the experts? Again, Ian is from Mendeley. Um, Iad is from ResearchGate and the dear colleague here, Sönke, is uh, a researcher himself who applies all, well, not all of them, but most of these technologies. Any questions? Okay. Uh, uh, I'm Pip uh, Lager for the German Newswire. And my question would be, um, if I was getting you right, um, your idea would be, um, as far as science uh, like, uh, science 2.0 is a concern that you make the research process more transparent like in early steps like the first experiments um, you make you may publish and others can uh, see and build on this and how do you want to solve the problem that um, science is still like a competitive uh, process where you have got scientists who work on certain uh, topics and don't want others to copy ideas. Good. Okay. Thank you very much for this question. It's a very interesting question. So this was, uh, let's say, the brave new world utopia I'm talking about of Science 2.0. The ideal case. If you have, if the scientist is in a situation where he can feel safe to publish as soon as he wants to because all the other cultural things like impact factor measurements, publication things are soft and are adapted to the methods that are available. Today we are restricted through like he mentioned medieval almost, almost medieval publication methods that developed a long time ago and our peer review process and publication process is based on the concept that you publish your scientific results as soon as they are publishable in a old-fashioned way, as you could put them together to a large text that can be understood by itself and can be read from A to Z. Okay? And this might change in the future, or this actually change. We just have to adapt the science and the scientific environment to this. Okay? If you want to have it this way, we can decide, but we are no longer stuck with this. We don't, we don't have to act like this. We can if we want. Okay, and all the other methods of gatekeeping what information should leak out to the public and what not is based on these old publication concepts. And now we as scientists can pick and set our gates as we want them to be set. Okay, so we are no longer this question as well. Um, I think that there are. are um areas of research which well, you can look at pre-publication and post-publication and so there are some areas of research which are highly competitive pre-publication and those are areas of research where there uh, are far more researchers than there is available money or another way of looking at it is where there are far more researchers than there are available ideas so an example of this is uh, researchers who are looking at a single genomic pathway associated with cancer there may be hundreds if not thousands of researchers looking at that one physical process they're all competing for funding uh, and so they are very secretive about what they are doing but there are many other areas of research where the number of ideas per researcher is far greater than the number of researchers uh, examples of this include mathematics where any self uh, self-respecting mathematician will not work on someone else's idea because it shows a lack of creativity Astronomy is another great example where there are far more galactic objects than there are researchers. So areas which are non-competitive pre-publication don't have problems with these kinds of tools. Areas which are pre-competitive or pu competitive pre-publication, post-publication they are not competitive. So these tools already have a benefit for the people who are doing things like literature research, for uh, trying to find data sets, for trying to find grant money. And, and What's then happening is in some of those highly pre-publication competitive areas, the amount of data that's being produced is becoming overwhelming. And so what you're finding is uh, very large pharmaceutical companies who are looking at uh, network data around the human genome have suddenly realized that they don't even have the scale. They may have 20,000 researchers. A company like GlaxoSmithKline will have 
you know, tens of thousands of researchers, but they don't even have the scale to analyze the data they're producing. So they're starting to produce data sets which are uh, in, in a pre-competitive space without any intellectual property associated with them, which can be used by larger communities in order to get to the scale to be able to, associate, uh, to, to analyze that kind of data. So, so I think that uh, we're, we're seeing changes just because of the nature of the information that, that is, being, is being looked at. Uh, and we're also seeing changes because some funders are beginning to mandate openness. Uh, but for a long time to come, there will still be pockets of researchers who will not want to share in the pre-publication side of things. I think they'll still benefit post-publication with these tools. There. Okay, thank you. Your colleague um, Ijat uh, also has a, a remark about that. I think it was you who said a few minutes ago that um, you remember only publishing about 10% uh, of your work because 90% was, as you called it, negative results. Yeah? So this is, is, is this what actually transparency is all about, that you open it up to the 100%? Yeah. I think... Um, I think we're talking about extremes right now. Um, I, I think we're talking about um, like uh, Ian and Zönke are really on the you know on, on both very extreme sides. You know, creating lots of data and, um, and 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 publishing in the old-fashioned way. But I think we have already data which can be published, even if we would do it in a com like in a combination between a traditional way and an online way, which could help in in. Uh, in, in publishing these d data. For example, I talked about the negative part. Even, and your point is right, I think there will be competition. The competition will be, f I think this won't change, right? Like in science, it's all about somehow competition, okay? Of course, you have physics or maths or as you call it, astrophysics or uh, maybe not as competitional as, as biology or medicine. Um, in case of computer science, you publish in many cases your your, your papers before you any you know you published it in a, in a journal, but I think competition is always somewhere. And uh, but if you take the part, which is the biggest part of data sets, which you know you generate it, um, like you take a virus, you put it on a culture, and it's not growing. Ah, okay, let's try it again. Let's change some some factors, and let's see if it's then if it's then working. And at the end, you take this final step, but the whole process getting to the step, this is what is published. But if we're getting this here, this part where we trying, we, where we're trying, if we're getting this published, I think this would help. This would be, I think this would be the biggest step we can make. Like we think about it, and I think this would this ha would help scientists a lot. I had one, I, I looked at one presentation from, um, it was a year ago. Someone looked at cell interactions. And he draw a cell interaction map, and he said, um, "I show you now what is are the cell interactions which are based on papers on positive results." And he just could, you know, he could he showed maybe like four or five dots in the whole system, and then he said, "I show you now what we deduced from negative results because we did some exclusive research, and the map was almost full." So I think this, if we Getting the scientists, I think, as first practical step, if we're getting the scientists or encourage the scientists, the data which he published, he didn't publish, but he generated, is publishing it, and exactly what is Ian saying, that we the whole data which is now flying around in the internet, like my gene data, which is in Gene Bank, um, my protein data is in SecBank, it's a protein database, um, and this is one of the tasks. What we also now we trying to get all the data sets and trying to match this to the people and then from there you can start and you can understand your environment more but I think your point is right so it's there would be a problem but we have to get them to do things which they haven't done yet and I think if we're getting these things correctly done then we are yeah one step further Maybe just a, a short suggestion it might help to draw a parallel to uh, to open innovation because in innovation the the process is is a bit comparable. There is this one case of um, Timothy Gowers who posted uh, on his he's a mathemat mathematician and he posted on his blog 
um, <clears throat> a challenge that he wasn't able to solve himself. So he posted it on his blog and received, I think it was about 40 um, uh, contributions by other scientists within several days. In the end, now you find publications all over the uh, mathematical, mathematical um, publication sphere um, where the authors publish under a syndicate called DHJ Polymath. So there's no single author anymore. It's a syndicate of authors who have collaborated in a project which has evolved out of a blog posting, if you want. So the same thing as an open innovation. If I can't solve it myself, I open the process up and see if someone else can help me. So this is collaboration. Yeah? Well, well, what caution against with, with, with those kinds of, of uh, indicators? There are two things I would caution against. The first thing I would caution against is that this person had already had a very significant reputation that he had built up through traditional channel, channels. And so one of the challenges we have with these tools is how do we get a spotlight on the young researchers who are making contributions to ensure that they already get that plan or audience or attention. And the second thing I would caution is that there are, it, it's, been, it's been like software product development to research and science. There are more ideas, or there are more, there are more things you can try in your lab than you have time to do in your PhD. And so these tools also need to bring efficiencies to people. They need to make the amount of attention that they have amplified, or they need to take some of the, the dirty tasks, the tasks that sink time from people away from them. Because in the end, we have... I mean, I mean it's, it's a bit depressing, but we have, we have 24 hours in a day, only so, several tens of thousands of days left before we die. And uh, we only have a finite number of keystrokes that we can write before we die. So you know, how, how do you make those as efficient as possible? That's, that's one of the questions I think is interesting. Efficiency, thank you.